Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our webinar. Um, <clears throat> we are now starting, and we have on board Mr. Mark Smalley, our presenter today. Uh, Mr. Mark Smalley is a self-employed IT management consultant based in the Netherlands, specialized in uh, SL and BISL, application management and business information management. And uh, we are now going to start because uh, we have waited for some few minutes, uh, additional minutes for others to join. Uh, but now uh, we will be going to uh, go ahead. Uh, attendees uh, we will have the uh, opportunity to ask questions in the questions, questions tab. You can see a questions tab and a chat tab. Uh, uh, at any time during the presentation, if you have any questions, please uh, post your questions and we will be passing to the presenter to answer. Uh, okay. Mark, please, the stage is yours now. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. And we can see your screen right now. Okay, so you can see me in full screen mode now? I can see the, the, the webinar, the presentation full screen mode, but uh, still, yes, I can see the presentation right now. Please go ahead. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for joining. Thank you very much for joining us for this um, this ITSMF Egypt webinar on ASL and BSL and how to become a valuable T-shaped professional, which I'll be talking about at the end of the uh, session. Now we had this session planned from five until sorry from six until seven. We started a, bit, a little bit late, but I'll try to adhere to the 7 o'clock deadline. And I'll be splitting up the presentation into three main parts, doing a short introduction, about 15 minutes, um, the first two major bullet points here, giving you the context of IT management as I look at it, and some of the trends that I find interesting. And I'll be introducing to you the trio of frameworks, BSL, ASL, and ITIL, which are very popular in the Netherlands and used in conjunction with each other. And I guess most of you will be familiar, more than familiar with ITIL. So I'll be talking about the BSL framework, which is primarily for business people, and the ASL framework, which is aimed at the application audience. And that will be the, um, so the ASL framework will be the second major part of the presentation. I'll spend 10 or 15 minutes on that and finish off with the BSL framework and pointing out where you can find additional information if you'd like to, uh, like to learn more about these frameworks. Now, please um, take the opportunity to send in your questions or any comments you'd like to make after each of the three sections, so after each uh, period of about three quarters, uh, sorry, about um, um, about 15 minutes, I'll be, excuse that little technical glitch, let's get back, so, let's back to normal. Yep, sorry about that. Uh, after each period of about 15 minutes, we'll have a little break, and any questions or comments that you've made, uh, I'll deal with then. So, moving on, I've had the pleasure of presenting physically at, in lots of countries, and these were the countries that I visited last year. But now I've got the pleasure of, visit, of uh, speaking to you from my hometown in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And unfortunately, it's not as sunny as this today. It's, uh, I just looked at the, um, the, the thermometer. It's currently 12 degrees, and it's cloudy. So it looks a little bit different to this. Uh, this is the, uh, the major view of Amsterdam, with the center in the middle of the picture. If you just, very, just walk off the, uh, the picture bottom left for about half an hour, you'll get to my house here. And uh, I'm broadcasting to you, so you've got a pretty physical representation of where I'm from. I'm broadcasting to you from my office in the cellar of this uh, one of these houses. 
So that's a, a little physical introduction for you. Now a personal one. Uh, I call myself an IT paradigmologist. And hopefully I'm the first IT paradigmologist you've ever come across because I invented the term. It's, um, it's been a while since I started off my IT career and you'll see that I started off as a programmer at 100% happiness. But then I got seduced into taking on management responsibilities and my happiness declined. So uh, after a while I thought um, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to return to the, the kind of work that I enjoy doing, uh, thinking about the content of things rather than managing it. So I became a consultant and I reinvented myself and I recommend that, that people should reinvent themselves quite a lot in their career. I reinvented myself as an IT paradigmologist and that means that I like studying IT paradigms. In other words, I like studying how people look at the IT world because we, I think we have changing perspectives and I find it fascinating. Well, the be touching on some of the different perspectives that I think are particularly relevant today and sharing those with you. I work for myself at Smalley.it, but I'm really representing the, uh, the uh, not-for-profit ASL BSL Foundation and the APMG uh, people this afternoon, this, this evening. I work um, as an ambassador at the ASL BSL Foundation where I spread the word around the world. That's what gets me to all these, uh, all these wonderful places. And we've contracted our certification scheme to the APM group, I expect you'll be familiar with. And I also help the, uh, the APMG with uh, examination questions and with marketing. So they're the three major, major companies I represent. Now, as an IT paradigmologist, this is one of my favorite IT paradigms. And I'm going to be spending about five, five minutes, ten minutes maybe on this, um, because it contains most of the stuff that I want to deal with in this, in, in this uh, webinar. I'm starting off top left, the business, the user organization, who left bottom who have a relationship with information systems. They use information systems to support their daily work, support their business processes. So that's the bottom left relationship. Then you've got the IT organization, and that could be an internal IT department um, in combination with external service providers who build systems, who manage systems, who uh, maintain them, who decommission them. So that's more the supply side. And the uh, top relationship, the demand relationship between the user organization and IT, that's often a, a troubled relationship because business and IT are notoriously, um, uh, well, they have a, often have an awkward kind of relationship. IT people often talk techno babble that business people can understand. And um, some IT people think that business people don't know what they want, they're always changing their minds. So that's possibly why we have spent so much time on the topic of business and IT alignment. Because that's, um, um, that's, a really, that's, that's still a hot topic. We've been talking about this for years, but it's, quite, uh, it's still quite a difficult area. And I'll be touching on that later on. So just using this big IT picture um, to illustrate what you, how you could use it in your own organization, whether it's an IT department or whether you're an external consultant, I like to use it by asking these kind of questions when, when I'm at clients. Like, for instance, if you look at the bottom at 6 o'clock on the screen, talking about information systems, ask your clients, are they satisfied with the functionality the systems have? Are they satisfied with the performance, with the security, for instance? Or at um, four or five o'clock on the screen, is the IT department 
able to change information systems quickly enough, or are they struggling with keeping up with business change? At 7 and 8 o'clock on the screen, are the, I think this is a very critical question. You know, we've spent millions on building information systems, IS in this diagram, but are the information systems being used well enough? Do people actually understand the information in the system, the users? Or are they possibly taking wrong decisions because they don't understand the systems correctly? Or are they wasting time because they don't understand how to use the systems? So these are just examples of questions that you could use yourself in your own organization to probe into the kind of, uh, kind of problems that may be um, maybe topics that you could uh, you could help people with so returning to the, the picture and just walking you through it part by part when I talk about information systems I like to make the very clear distinction between left and right on this screen information on the one side and technology on the on the right hand side technology which could be broken down from an analytical point of view into hardware software and data and you could also give it another cross-section. You could say it's applications and infrastructure. These are both valid ways of looking at information systems. Then more on the left-hand side, we talk about data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. I think they're, they're still relevant ways of, of looking at information, and they're, that's really more the, more the functional side of information systems. Now, a very important statement that I'm going to make here and if you do have any uh, any comments on this, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, certainly appreciate you uh, you sharing those comments or asking questions. I I believe that information and technology are both business assets, two business assets that are very closely intertwined, but have different characteristics and therefore need to be managed in their own right. So one of the central themes in this presentation is that I'm going to be talking about technology on the one side, which is uh, the domain which IT departments are responsible for, and I'm going to be talking about information as a domain that the business is responsible for. And that's, um, that'll be the information part will be the last part of the presentation. So I hope you... Um, uh, understand the question, uh, understand the statement, and possibly would like to comment on it. So two business assets which need to be managed independently. Now, because I'm an application guy, I told you I started off as a programmer, um, I think about applications a lot, and when I think about applications, I like to divide them into three, I'm calling them objects here, within quotes, three objects that need to be identified and managed in their own right. Uh, take for an illustration um, an SAP application. The supplier, SAP, has a standard application which needs to be managed, needs to be managed whatever customer, the customers are using it. Then as a, the second object that needs to be managed, you have the the implementation that has been done in in a certain um, at a certain client's location. So it's implemented for, uh, for instance, a bank. But within the bank, and now I'm coming on to the third part, it could be used by two or three different departments in two or three different ways. So bear this in mind. Somebody's got to manage the, the application. Somebody also has to manage the implementation, you know, which kind of parameters have been used. But there's this third dimension, which is often neglected. Who is responsible for managing how it is actually used? So that's, uh, that's something that I find, uh, find insightful. Now, moving on from the information systems in that little paradigm of mine, the organizations, both for the user organization and for the IT organization. Um, you know, what is an organization? Comprises values, goals, strategy, obviously people who do stuff, people who have knowledge and skills. 
the activities which are often clustered into processes. People have roles and responsibilities with respect to activities. And people, of course, have relationships with each other and agreements that they have to adhere to. For instance, service level agreements, although that, that might be a bad example. Now, talking about organizations and particularly responsibilities, as I mentioned before, I've stuck information on the left-hand side of this diagram, the responsibility of the user organization, and the technology, data, software, and hardware on the right-hand side. So we've got the IT organization responsible for technology and the user organization responsible for information. Drilling that down a little bit more, um, the user organization is responsible for two major things, I believe. It's for demand and use of information and technology. The business, the users have got to come up with what do we actually need, what kind of information do we need to support our business processes. That's the demand side. Then we move over to the right hand side. The IT organization supplies the IT services that provide that kind of functionality. Then moving back to the left-hand side, now the users have got the system that they wanted, but what about use? Are they using the system effectively and efficiently? And if you have now have the opportunity to reflect on your own organization, or one of your clients possibly, if you're an external consultant, just think about how they use the information systems do they use them effectively? Do they understand the systems? Do they understand the meaning of information? Um, and are they using the systems efficiently? Or are they possibly, you know, when something goes wrong, you often waste your own time trying to, trying to work out what's, what's gone wrong. Then you waste your neighbor's time by asking them, have you got the same problem? Can you help me with this? So it's, uh, people have done research on this. There's a significant amount of time and therefore money wasted on um, poor use of information systems because people aren't trained properly. Now I've talked about demand, supply and use. You'll see there's the last fourth part here on the IT organization side, an important responsibility of the IT organization to communicate to the business in terms of what kind of benefits are available what kind of costs are associated with these benefits and of course which risks are associated with choices because it's not up to IT to make a decision on the risks it's up to the business to do that but obviously you've got to inform them in in language that they can understand and that's often the difficult part what are the consequences if we take this choice sure it's going to be cheaper we're going to introduce it quicker to the marketplace so that will probably have significant business benefits in terms of getting revenue quicker than when we wait for a slower but possibly higher quality solution and is the business prepared to take that risk do they what kind of risk appetite do they have so I think this is a very important part where uh, we IT people can provide and demonstrate our value to the business if we communicate in terms of benefits, costs and risks. And often the business only has one lever with which to control IT and that's costs, budget. I've ranted on for too long about that. Um, but still on the topic of responsibilities, I'm going to break down this, these two uh, boxes, user organization and IT organization into uh, a slightly more detailed view which I'm now going to explode to make it hopefully visible for you. So please still try and imagine that three box model with the users on the left hand side, the IT organization on the right hand side and the information systems which have dropped off the screen down the bottom. Now I'll start on the right hand side because you'll probably immediately recognize far right uh, ITIL te uh, terminology which I've used in an IT um, function, an IT department, the green area here, 
for the infrastructure side of the um, of the IT. And on the left hand side, left half of the green, that's the application side. So I've divided IT up into applications and infrastructure. I'm using ITIL terminology to talk about the infrastructure. And I'm using ASL, the application services library terminology, to describe the application world. And you'll probably noticed the um, the diagram is split up into three levels, strategy at the top, projects in the middle, and operations down the bottom. Hopefully, you'll recognize this and you'll possibly be able to identify the kind of uh, activities that you do when you work in IT departments, strategic or in change or in, in operations. Now, moving on to the right-hand side, and I'm going to go far right, into the business, starting at the bottom left, let's say you work in a retail organization, the business operations in this case is working in the shops, actually earning money, serving customers, selling stuff and getting the money in. Now that's where that's where probably where most of the costs are made, but certainly that's where the revenue occurs, business operations. Now moving straight up from business operations right to the top of the diagram, we've got business strategy. If you're in a retail organization, then the directors have made some strategic choices as to the kind of market that you serve, the kind of products that you, uh, you provide to the marketplace, and possibly the way you provide uh, services to the marketplace, products to the marketplace, whether you do it just physically, or online, or both. So that certain strategic kind of decisions, whether you're based just in Egypt, for instance, or you're, you also operate in other countries. And then in the middle, we've got business projects. Say you're going to expand um, from your local market in Egypt to, uh, to an adjoining market, an adjoining uh, neighboring country. That would be a major business project to expand your business. And undoubtedly, when changing that, um, making that business change, you'll have different kind of functional requirements for your business. So it means functional change. And I'm looking at the um, functionality management area here, thinking about what kind of functionality do we currently have and how do we need to change that. And then getting IT, IT projects and releases to realize that. After which, the IT goes into production. And in business operations, there's somebody, often a key user, who's responsible for supporting the business with the use of IT systems. Now, this has given you a very short introduction to, um, oh, I've just forgotten one area here, the information strategy. Uh, take a take a, an example there. If you decide to use social media as part of your business strategy to engage with your customers, I think that would be a, that would be a topic that would be addressed by information strategy. So that's uh, that's probably a good example of that. Now this blue area, this is what I'm going to going to be talking about for a couple of minutes now. Information strategy functionality usage management. Together I call that business information management. Uh, some people just call it information management. I like the word business just to emphasize that it's actually in the business. Now I'm giving you two fairly long definitions of information management uh, not to deal with in detail here. Um, but just, just as reference, because you're going to have these, these, this slide deck after the event. So this is a definition that the Australian Queensland government has, um, has defined. It talks about value. Another definition, uh, this is one by the Association for Information and Image Management. This talks more about the responsibilities, saying that it's... Um, Information management, it emphasizes it's a business responsibility, corporate responsibility, 
and organizations will be held accountable for managing information appropriately and responsibly. Summing these up for you, because it, this is really the point I want to make, the definitions of information management you come across talk about using information to get the value out of it, getting the value out of information, and they emphasize that it's a corporate responsibility. They don't talk about technology, but it's obvious that technological progress has um, has fueled the information revolution, which, which is why we've got so much information around. Now, rounding off this section, what goes wrong when information management or business information management is executed poorly? And this is not about the technology, this is in the business side. If people interpret information incorrectly, they're going to take bad decisions. And that could be uh, could be very costly. Um, from an efficiency point of view, they waste their time on using information systems if they don't understand them. If they don't know what they want, they spend IT budget on the wrong things, which is a great shame. Business projects can be delayed if people are chopping and changing, always changing their minds. And even if they're not using information strategically, like the example I used for um, uh, social media or big data, which we're talking about a lot nowadays because so much data is around, you know, you could your business could um, could be disadvantaged from a competitive point of view. If your competitors are using social media and you aren't, then then you know that's a serious problem. So there are quite serious symptoms and problems associated with business information management if you don't do it well. So I think that's the case why it should be, uh, why we should be paying attention to it. Just finishing off this section, using the diagram for those of you who are familiar with frameworks to position, uh, you'll see on the right hand side, ITIL ISO 20000 and our ASL framework as supply-based frameworks. PRINCE2 and COBIT up the top as frameworks that you could use either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side as an overarching framework. And the BSL framework, which I'm going to go into later on, on the left-hand side as guidance for user organizations. And if you look at COBIT, you can see that COBIT already positions itself as an overarching framework and whereas the BSL framework, which I've added in this uh, in this little diagram on the left-hand side, isn't formally in COBIT, the other frameworks are, and I'm currently talking to lots of ISACA people, the COBIT people, about positioning BSL and COBIT together. Now I'm going to move on to the um, the end of this section and. Mrs. President, if there are any questions, give people the opportunity to for you to share their questions and comments with me before I move on to the ASL section. Well, everybody, if any if anyone has any question, please uh, raise your hand or post it to the question tab directly. Uh, otherwise, we may proceed to the next section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll proceed. If anybody has any questions, we can always deal deal with them. Yeah. Uh, anyways, if we, if we didn't handle questions now, we can handle them together at the end of the presentation. So you can proceed now, Mark. Yeah, okay. And I'm a bit mindful about the time. I'd like to uh, like to see if we could finish it off at about, uh, about 7 o'clock if people have other yeah. engagements. Yeah, we are almost midway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. I've, I've got a clock in front of me, so I'm uh, okay. cognizant of the time. Okay. Um, a couple of comments on, on both of the frameworks, the ASL2 framework, the second version of the framework, and BSL. These frameworks started off in the, in the mid-90s. They're owned by a not-for-profit foundation, the ASL-BSL Foundation, which is similar to ITSMF. It's a membership organization. Uh, the difference is that we have intellectual property, these two frameworks. But apart from that, we're fairly similar kind of organization. And I spoke, and I think at about 12, 12 maybe 15 
various IT SMF chapters around the world. And we're very keen on collaborating with, uh, with our sister organizations. Uh, the frameworks have been recognized by, um, for instance, the, the formal ITIL complementary qualification. The ISO standards organization is uh, working on ASL at the moment, adopting some of the, the guidance into a new, a new standard. Um, and we've given our certification program to APMG. And I guess those of you who are familiar with Van Haren Publishing, uh, these are the people who do our publications. But most of the stuff, most of our online publications, you'll find on the site, and they're free of charge. Now, the, uh, I'm starting off the ASL section with a number of statements, which I can summarize by saying that uh, you know, we've seen that the, the application world is getting, getting extremely complex, and IT services are diversifying, which is leading to specialization um, in the marketplace. So we've got lots of parties fulfilling various parts of the whole ecosystem. So one of the key topics is integrating uh, all of these parties. For instance, if you take Google, Google Maps as, a, as an example, Google is responsible for the application Google Maps and provides that to the marketplace. But Google Maps could equally be part of your application landscape, particularly if you're in the, say you're a retail uh, organization, you would possibly use Google Maps to show your customers where your departments are. So Google Maps could, has to be managed from two perspectives. Google manages it, the people who use Google Maps manage it, and ASL could be used for both purposes. So you can use ASL as um, uh, for, for multiple purposes. Uh, the word diversity was mentioned on the previous slide. It's interesting to think of your applications, your information systems in terms of a transport metaphor. Are your applications trains, buses, scooters, cars or scooters? Trains are heavy duty um, applications which the whole company relies on, like you know, the country relies on the railroad system, whereas scooters on the other end are possibly the apps on your smartphone, which obviously you treat differently. And by thinking about your applications, your information systems in this diversified kind of way, you justify treating them differently. So that's a nice little metaphor that I stole from Capgemini. One of the central topics in ASL is the the concept of a service team, which uh, represents the need for integrated service delivery. And you can see on the right-hand side, I've used the service team as really the overarching function covering application management and IT infrastructure management. So there's a need, for instance, if you've got two departments or two companies, maybe your IT has been outsourced to two companies, you have to ensure that there's somebody who represents the, the whole. And in ASL, we call that the service team. On the other side, you'll see business information management that represents the management and the users. And that trio of frameworks, which are used often in the Netherlands, BSL on the business side, ASL and ITIL on the, on the IT side. Now I'm going to be focusing on ASL, which is this, uh, this column in that diagram I talked about earlier. And you'll see the three layers, the application strategy, application maintenance and renewal, and application support in the framework, alongside some other parts which I'll talk about in a minute. This framework is divided up into 26 separate processes which are interrelated. And I'm going to be going through these um, in, the, in um, six steps for each of the clusters. The first cluster, the operational processes, are about keeping the applications up and running. And when 
people have questions, users have questions about applications, answering those when they have incidents, when they have queries. It's also about configuration management, about continuity management, which also covers security. And it's about the interface with the IT ops department, which is often a critical interface. So this is about keeping the apps up and running. The second cluster is, and many of you will recognize the typical software development life cycle here, this is about actual change to applications. So when a concrete change comes up, these are the processes that come into play to design the change, build it, program it, change the parameters, do the testing, and actually implement it. And then we have two processes in the middle, which we call the connecting processes, which connect the change side, and coordinate change, with operations, a very critical area, synchronizing operations with change. At the managing level, five managing processes dealing with the contact and contract, often the service level agreement with the users, planning the people who need to do these activities, the whole application management activities, quality management, quality of the application, the processes, the skills of people, costs and benefits, keeping track of time spent, for instance, and dealing with external suppliers. On the strategic level, application strategy, application lifecycle management, which applications do we have, what kind of health are they in, and how do they fit into the future land, into the future plans of the business. So this is longer term planning. And then finally, just to give you the, uh, the quick overview of ASL, top left, this is talking about the organization that does application management. Which skills do we need? Which um, services, for instance, which tasks do we do ourselves? What do we outsource? What kind of technology do we use? Who are our strategic suppliers? What kind of capabilities do we need? What kind of services do we offer to the business? So this is thinking about it more from an organizational perspective. So this is the very quick overview of the, the ASL framework. In addition to that, we have freely available at the website a collection of best practices which people, users of our frameworks have um, developed themselves and donated to the foundation. And this is an example not to talk about now, but just to tell you that, that this is, I think about 20 page, 24 page service level agreement as somebody in the industry has developed and shared with the with the foundation so if you're interested in examples you can get them from uh, from our foundation website the final part of this asl section uh, i'll refer you for uh, to a paper that i wrote a while ago with sharon taylor who was the chief architect of itil version 3 in which we compared these two frameworks and came to the we came to um, to a nice little summary saying um, it's about living apart together whereas ITIL also addresses application management and application development just as ASL does ASL uh, dives a little bit deeper particularly into the actual maintenance part and speaks more in language that application people understand. So it certainly adds, and it's a very compact body of work. Um, the book is about 200 pages, um, which is a lot more compact than the, 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 the complete uh, ITIL collection. This is available on, the, on the, both our website at the foundation, but at the link up top. So. Um, and invite you to take a look at that if you if you like. And now there's another opportunity, if there are any questions, to deal with them on ASL. Did you receive any questions? I rushed through that fairly quickly.
we didn't receive questions until now from audience, so I yeah. assume uh, there, is, there are no questions. So to save time, just please uh, proceed directly, and we, if uh, any questions appear midway, we'll cover at the end of the presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you do want any more information about ASL, please feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, I'll leave my details at the end of the session. I'll be more than pleased to help you with uh, more than this very quick overview of ASL. Now, moving on to BSL, as I said, it's, it's a framework which is not intended as guidance for IT people primarily, but for business people. But if you as an IT person are often involved with business people and you see them struggling with their responsibilities, this could, be also, could also be interesting for you to, uh, to help you help the business. So it's, um, I think it's potentially quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, the main statements here, as I mentioned before in the introduction, organizations depend on information systems increasingly. So it's critical, so, you know, we, if, if information is that important, you've got to manage it. And this, the, the area, that blue area in that framework, business information management, that helps you deal with, with change in organization, decide what kind of requirements you need, manage systems from a strategic and an operational point of view, and the, the BSL framework is intended to give you guidance in this blue area, information strategy, functionality management, and usage management, which is more about supporting the users with their daily work. The framework, as you see, has a similar kind of um, construction as the, the ASL framework. You can, you can put them back to back, really. Bottom left, and you'll see again, we have information strategy, the top area in my, uh, my blue, part of, blue part of the diagram, functionality management and use management. Again, broken into three layers, strategic managing and operational, broken down into 23 discrete processes which are related with each other. In this diagram, just as with the ASL diagram, you can see a number of relationships, but not all of them. The, uh, the, there are multiple relationships, but you, um, if, you, if we draw all the lines, that would make it extremely confusing. So we're leaving it with this top, uh, this top level view. And I'm just like with ASL, I'm running through it um, with you uh, in in the six clusters. After I mentioned that these tasks, these processes that you see here, for instance, end user support, these are done in practice, uh, often at, at a very informal level. Somebody in your organization is tasked with helping other users when things go wrong. That might be a formal job title, end user, but often it's informal. You might have somebody in your organization who's a business analyst or an information analyst. You might have a formal system owner, uh, but it could be it could be the head of a department who's the owner of a system. So be aware when I talk about these these activities and processes that this is stuff which is being do, being done in in every organization. The question that you have to ask yourself is to which degree of formality this is all organized? And the critical question is, is it too informal and therefore risky, or, or should it be, and, and, and therefore should it be formalized? So bearing that in mind, the operational part is non-technical. It's about how are information systems being used, and having for instance, you, I think you have a good understanding of end user support, particularly when it's functional, when you're talking about questions like, um, when do I have to have my timesheets entered? Is it the end of the month exactly, or do I have a couple of days after it? You know, that's not a technical question. That's about how information systems are being used. So there's somebody in the business who understands that part. Business data management 
do people have a correct understanding of the information? Very critical. The next part of the framework, which is in, with the analogy with the ASL framework, uh, when something needs to be changed, the business needs to specify their requirements. Then the automated part gets pushed off to the IT department to be developed. But in the meantime, who's thinking about designing the non-automated part of information systems? In other words, the procedures, possibly um, user manuals, forms that need to be filled in. That's, uh, that's, part, that's a business responsibility. When the information system comes back, it needs to be tested, reviewed and tested from an acceptance test, testing point of view. But not only the system, but also the non-automated part needs to, needs to be tested. Is the department ready to actually use the systems? So this has a slight, slightly broader scope, I believe, than uh, some definitions of testing. And then similarly, we've got the, the synchronization of stability, daily use on the left-hand side, and change on the right-hand side. At the management level, we're talking about the opposite side of the SLA. Here we've got somebody, possibly a head of a department, who's dealing with the service level agreement with IT, and dealing with um, what do we actually need, what's our demand. This is not demand management from an ITIL perspective. This is the other side of the fence. This is people thinking up, what do we need? Justifying decisions from a financial point of view. Is there a business case? behind an, uh, an investment in the information systems? What will information provisioning look like in the future? For instance, the question, are we going to use social media and big data in our enterprise? Is that going to give us value? So that's how do we use information from a strategic point of view? And finally, who's responsible for the systems? Who owns the information? Um, do you work in a chain, for instance, in the healthcare world, where if you're working in a hospital, you, you've got um, you're working in a chain with general practitioners and uh, and chemists, and you know it's all interrelated. So information's flowing through your organisation to other parties, and who are the information partners? Got to be aware of that. And finally, when autonomous divisions in organizations come up with separate plans for information, it would be a good idea to, uh, to, to coordinate them as much as possible. You can't force autonomous, decision, autonomous divisions to, to change their plans, but you can inform them about other plans in the organization and encourage them to, uh, uh, to, get, uh, to, to try and get some kind of uh, synergy from different plans. Again, we have best practices for the BSL framework, which you can find on the website. This is a, a process description for the non-automated part of information systems. And just like with the ASL framework, I wrote a white paper with Sharon Taylor comparing BSL and ITIL. We came up with the conclusion that these are complementary frameworks. This is a very, very detailed uh, diagram how you can interface ITIL with BSL, but I'm leaving that just for your reference. And giving you an example of things that people have achieved with by using BSL, um, two organizations in the healthcare that I talked to recently saying that by using BSL to to improve their business information management, they'd improved their decision making. They got the business more involved in um, in the information system part. They've got more satisfaction from the business. So, as an IT department, you can use this instrument to improve you, to improve your appreciation from the business. They've helped. It's helped them manage their suppliers better. 
and they can even improve the efficiency of their business processes, which of course comes down to the bottom line. Now, I, this this is um, I think this is either the 1940s or the 1950s. There were men and women in white coats who knew everything, but that has changed completely because we're now, and this is just rounding off the presentation, talking about the T-shaped professional. Now we have so many specialized parties that it's often difficult to talk to each other. And the concept of the, the T-shaped professional is the professional who has in-depth understanding of also in order to communicate with, with colleagues in other domains, other disciplines, should have an understanding to a certain degree uh, of, of those fields. So this is my, this was the thought behind the title of this presentation. Hopefully learning a little bit about BSL and ASL, learning about business information management and application management, although it's a very brief introduction, will broaden your T and enable you to talk to these adjoining disciplines a little bit better. So with that, Mrs. President, uh, we're at the end of the presentation. If there are any questions, we can deal with them now, and otherwise I'll show the additional resources. Well, Mark, I still you have one question now. I'm trying to copy for you. So it's a um, okay. second. I'm glad we've got one question. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it was very nice, uh, Mark. It's a very nice presentation. And uh, uh, as I, um, I was talking to you in the, the beginning, beginning of our communication in arranging this webinar, the topic of Asal and Baisal is not uh, so popular in our community. Uh, and that's why. Uh, and that, that's why we were considering arranging such a webinar. So I think it was good introduction to the community, uh, to, uh, to uh, the attendees um, for uh, getting around what us and advice are talking about. Um, and I personally want to ask, I, I can see the, 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 there is com some commonality in the structure of both frameworks. They are almost structured in, in the, I mean, uh, main blocks are common. So uh, you showed some uh, some uh, some opposition between the, um, comparing ASL and ITIL and uh, uh, the other hand uh, PISL and ITIL, but uh, maybe we need to, to develop some uh, white paper about uh, comparing both of them or not not comparing or opposing just like a uh, mapping uh, between both uh, frameworks because um, how how each part in in each framework supports the other. Uh, now I I will read to you the so question. Could you just repeat that last bit? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I was just suggesting that, that we you develop some white paper. You develop some white paper about comparing the two frameworks, ASL and BISA, because as we saw, uh, there there are white papers compar uh, comparing ASL and ITIL, and another uh, one. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I I need some think, something yeah, to, to uh, like to relate relate to the, the main blocks of both uh, frameworks, ASL and BISO, how each part in this framework, how, how, they, how they support each other, how they compl complement each other. Yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Yeah. Now I read for, to, for you the question from one of, the, our, of our audience. Um, and the question is, how can business management measure usage of IT system in business? And how efficiently is it? Uh, it is used. That this gives the management feedback on their decision for the IT functionality developed. If it was a correct decision, did they develop it as requested? Uh, are users effectively trained to to use it? Well, I think uh, the bottom line is uh, how can business management ma measure uh, usage of IT system in business? Um, Efficiency, like how, how, how business management can evaluate the efficiency of the IT systems and in their support of uh, the business user based on your ASL and buy, and buy sell, uh, best of practices? Yeah, I think I've got the, the, yeah, referred to business information management. I believe it's, it's talking about it more from a business perspective. Yeah. 
I've just just got up this got this um, this diagram here, pointing you to the demand management and the financial management processes, which are both in the management area. Um, really, the demand management process is about evaluating what do we have, and does it um, is it sufficient for for our needs in the near future. Um, that's really where new initiatives get get started. Then there's a process that you know. Then things get done. But really, that's when that's when the question uh, that was asked comes into play. Now we've done something, but how do we evaluate whether it's actually whether it's actually given given the value that we want? So that's really part of not only coming up with a business case up front, saying you know this is going to cost. Um, uh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars and we think it's worth it so we're going to do it and then filing the um, the business case in the waste paper basket and not looking at it anymore but revisiting the business case have we actually got the value out of it so you're talking in terms of specifying up front what do we you know really tr trying to do it in terms of what are the benefits that you want out of, out of the system is it and as much as possible talking about benefits in end terms if we make this um, if we get this new functionality is our department going to be more efficient for instance or do we think that this that adopting using social media is going to get more customers. I think that that should really be. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. With this forgive me for that. But trying to formulate it in terms which are as much as possible at the end of the chain in business. Rather, you know, we IT people talk about IT terms too much. I'm afraid that's a very poor answer to the question. Yeah. But I, I do like to emphasize trying to translate as much as possible all IT initiatives in terms of is it going to give the business better business, cheaper business, more business, less risky? Are we going to reduce our, um, for instance, if you're in a, if, if you have lots of compliancy regulations that you have to take into consideration is does an investment in an information system make you uh, more compliant so try, trying to translate it into those kind of terms but certainly monitoring monitoring what you've done okay uh, I think we don't have uh, we don't have any more questions Mark that was very beneficial and uh, Thank you so much for your time and thank you for our audience for joining us in this webinar today. We hope to organize uh, more webinars for, for, on more interesting, other interesting uh, topics like, like this one. And uh, we hope you join us again in the future. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. And goodbye. Uh, yeah, I'm, leave, I'm leaving, you, leaving you with these uh, information resources where you can get more stuff if you want them. Yes. And leaving you with my contact details, if you do want to get in touch, please do. I'd be like, delighted to be of service. And thank you all again very much for attending. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.